Welcome and welcome back to Thai League Central. We're here again for another week of the recap and preview. This week, of course, we're going to focus on the games that happen on Match Day 12 and look forward to this weekend's action coming up for Match Day 13. Lots to talk about as the Thai League is getting towards the end of the first leg, or I guess the halfway point of what's been a very interesting season to say the least. Lots of drama, lots of things going on which uh, Thai fans and foreign fans watching the Thai League are discussing about. So I'm not alone today, of course. I always have a guest joining me on this show. It is Op today. Op, how are you doing? It's been great. The sun is out. Um, My cactus is receiving lots of food. It's growing and all in all, I'm having a good time. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah, let's not waste any time and start discussing about the important games, I guess, that took place during the past weekend. So, of course, match day 12. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to begin with this one. It happened last Friday, seemed uh, not long ago, but actually, yeah, it's, it's been... Uh, almost a week already. Port back at home at the Pat Stadiums with the new generators, the new lights. Um, they played a Friday night match against uh, a Supanbri side that seems to not really be able to cope with Port's attacking prowess at all. Port finished that game 4-0 in their favor. Of course, Sergio Suarez getting two goals. Arisak getting one as well. And then the last goal was late, late on by uh, Kevin Dierum. So, yeah, I, I thought it was a phenomenal performance for, for Port. Absolutely a, a great game if, if you're a Port fan watching that one. I thought everything seems to be clicking well now for Port. You know, they, they've won seven in a row, I believe, um, under under uh, coach uh, Salahutri Pan, you know. And it's it's been it's been good for them. They've been scoring at least I think three goals per game. Lots of people in their you know in their teams contributing as well. Sergio Suarez, Arisak Gaisal in the midfield is playing well together. It, it seems like that that squad that we were talking about earlier on in the season that's you know dream team almost with so many good talented players coming together. They're, they're starting to work things out. And, and this win for them is, is very good because not only is it a big win and it continues that streak for them, it, it secures almost uh, the, the AFC spot. And, you know, BG, they're locked in now. You're going to mention about that that game later on that they beat Chonbri last weekend. They're locked in now to that um, AFC spot. So one of the four spots is gone. Port seems to be doing well in, in abling to uh, compete for – that that other you know maybe second or, th- or third spot for sure so yeah good win for them H- how how do you see the the game overall uh, I mean w- was it was it just a matter of Supanbri not being able to compete with them or do you think that Port's actually in stride to to achieve something big this year I think it's simply down to Port being so good and it's interesting you bring up the stats of the wins and goals because Port, the, the Port official Facebook just posted this like stats that in the league alone under the new coach Saragut Tripan they've won six straight games in the league they've scored 21 goals that's rough that's like um, 3.5 goals per game so yeah I mean they're just too good for a side like Supanduri yeah, uh, and I think I agree with you that they are they're locked in for for, for the ACL spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna preview their game later on as well in in this podcast. So do stick with us for sure if if you're interested in that. Yeah. Um. Basically, before moving on to recapping the 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 BG and Chonburi game, yeah, my my closing thought on Port was I, I think this is a team that's 
coming together and playing well during the most important time of the year almost you can argue because they they've had their struggles you know they, they started off the the pre-covid season very well um i think they were ranked third at the moment i mean back then and after lockdown you know they had that struggle with the with the lights the, the performance on the pitch wasn't that good and i don't know if if, if heberty's injury might have played a positive role on on how they're playing. I mean, of of course, it's 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 negative to to lose such a such a great player on your team, but the way they're playing without him, maybe it works better. I don't know. Maybe maybe it works better because the the the, the flow of the game, the way they're linking up play, and especially during that Supanbury match, it was evident that hey, maybe maybe they don't need him after all. So let's see what they do going forward. And there's been rumors that they've already locked in. Yannick Boli from Ratchaburi to to replace him. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. Oh no, um, I think I have this like I have this feeling that Port FC is the they are at their best and they are the most charming when they are playing as a underdog. Mm-hmm. And it, it's difficult being an underdog when you're owned by a billionaire chairwoman and yeah. you've got. Like you said, an all-star team. Yeah. But I think since they've had a bad start to the season with on-field and off-field issue. Yeah. When with changes in managers, everything looks spiraling out of control for them. Mm-hmm. And that somehow puts them into that underdog situation that, that it forces them to stick together and fight. And yeah. somehow they've turned turn this thing around. So. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a great team. point there. Yeah. That's a great point. And talking about great BG Patum. Yeah. You got, you got a smile on your face up because not only have they guaranteed a spot in next year's AFC competition, they've done it in phenomenal fashion. I mean, talk about going on an unbeaten run so far this year and, and they're playing well, you know, they beat Chunbury. It was okay. It was a tight game in the end because they made it tight for themselves, you know, poor marking there to, to give Boscovich that goal. But earlier on, we have to talk about General and Sumanya, the, the two goals from the Thai players. General with, I think, an amazing goal. It could have been probably goal of the week, I'd say. I mean, him and Sanrawat's volley. Sanrawat scored, of course, at Trat and, and gave BU the, their first win for, for, um, for a cold ban. But talking about this one, I thought it was a phenomenal goal from General. The way he, you know, uses his body to to almost uh, fade away from the fender, and that shot, you know, you don't see many goals going in the the, the second post from uh, from that tight of an angle with the right foot. So, yeah, it, it's great. He beats into Ishai, and it, it's it's an awesome year for BG because you look at the defense. Okay, you lose Irfan. He, he's coming back. He's on the road to recovery. But you put Chatri back there. The defense holds its line for most of the game. The midfield is just one of the best, if not the best in the league, with Sumanya, Titipan, and Sarat, who hopefully, knock on wood, if they can stay healthy, this is going to be an, a team that could probably compete easily in the AFC. And then up top, you know, you're going to get Diogo and Tiersen. But your current strikers, Toti is doing decent. General getting goals. Ciro can also come off the bench. They're all, they're all, you know, chipping in. They're all shining in to to help BG be able to achieve what they want. So, Op, I, I mean, I'm I'm going to ask you on this one. Do you think BG is going to continue to stay unbeaten for you know the remainder of this leg and maybe beyond? I think BG should continue on their like to to build on their good momentum at least for 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 the remaining of the first leg. There's no reasons to to stop. The management has, has been clear that our first objective is to secure the ACL spot. And then by after doing that, we'll, we'll fully focus on, on on our target to win the league. Um, I thought Jen Rob was fantastic against Chambury. And I think he's playing with confidence. He, you could see that the joy in his face when he scored that goal. You know, yeah. What a thunderous strike! And he also set up 
Suman Ya second goal. You know, he I think he held out the ball well, and you know a simple layoff for his you know, for his teammate. You know, that, that that was classic number nine play. And yeah. one, one one element of the game I was disappointed with with Shonbury was how the center back deal with BG's like front front two. I think there's this idea that sometimes in modern footballs defenders are used to playing against a four three three or a four two three one. Basically coming up against a side with only one main striker, and then. It's been like this for a decade or, or two, and now defenders starts you know they, they start to forget how to play against a front two, a conventional front two strikers. And if you could rewatch the game against or games in at Leo Stadium, you could see the 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 Shonbury center back getting dragged out of position countless times. So BG wasn't they they weren't great building out from the back, but. Whenever they launch a long ball, and then you know, the the Chelsea defender will always isolate it, and it was clear on on the second goal, like Jen Rob was able to pull his marker out of, of position. Yeah, and I think that 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 cost Chelsea the game. Chelsea, it's this this Chelsea, Chelsea and and BG have this strange dynamic as well. Whenever Chelsea comes to us, they don't look as good. And it's vice versa. When we go to Shonbury, it's always a tough game. So mm. I wasn't surprised we we won the game, but I was a bit surprised by how comfortable we look. And it's a welcome surprise to see again Suman Ya playing so well, Jen Rob getting the goals and assists. And and one player I was really worried about was Chatee Shimtele. Obviously, I, I prefer players like Irfan. Playing as a right-sided center back in you know, a back three, but then it somehow Char three had a good game, going up, playing the, attacking those headers in corner kicks and free kicks. I think he was really effective. Overall, I, I think you know, from now on, let's build on this momentum and go for for the league in the second leg. Let's do it! Come on! <laughs> yeah, love the love the joy that you're displaying there. Cheering for BG, who's, uh, you know, talking about a phenomenal run. That is a team that is doing everything possible to be able to finish the season as league champions. And I mean, they are they're in route. You know, they they perform very well both home and away. Still undefeated, the only team remaining that's undefeated in the league. All right. So I'm here with Paul Neat from K League United. Paul, very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. My my absolute pleasure. How how are you? Uh, not too good after watching that last night, but hey, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, I uh, I must admit I did not expect um, that result. I was quite confident that Sol would get a decent result, but I didn't expect five goals at all. I mean, Sol haven't scored five in a in a, in a match since 2017, so this goes to show that it was a bit of a, a freak result in that regard. Um, obviously, a lot of the talk is about sort of the failings on the Ching Rai end. But to be completely fair, Seoul did perform above, you know, expectations. So, sort of two questions in that. One is, did Seoul play more positively than they usually do in the domestic league? Yeah, I think they did um, because it was very lethargic at times in the league. It was very predictable. It was honestly a little bit difficult to watch at times because they lacked a certain uh, ruthlessness in in the final third. I mean, you know, I talked about how they they haven't scored five goals in a game um, since 2017, but in the league this year, they managed to score 23 goals. That was it. That is the second lowest in their history. Well, since 2004, when they became FC Seoul mm. after moving from Anyang, you have to go back to 2007 when they last scored that so so few goals. Before that was 2004 with just. 20. So, yes, it was a surprise. Um, and honestly, it, it was a good performance. They passed the ball around well. They looked quite fluid in the final third. And they didn't really 
seem to need to get out of second gear for whatever reason or another. Yeah, so on that point, when you look at the issues behind the scenes at FC Seoul and a similar thing happening at Melbourne Victory, you probably think that this would be the right time for a Thai club, the right group for a Thai club to, to make a step up. If you had a club that was you know, on better form, had better resources, this could be a good chance to make the knockout stage. Of course, we've seen Bui Ram do it twice and Mung Tong do it once. And I'd argue both of those groups were probably a bit tougher than this group was. You know, Mung Tong had to get past, well, had to play against and beat uh, Kashima Antlers and Osan Hyundai, for example. Do you think with this result, are you pretty confident that Seoul will go through? Yes, I think I had said to myself that if Seoul can get four points from six over these next two games, then that would be very good and also put them in the drawing seat to finish in second. Um, the 5 0 was not expected, and it, it does now take the pressure off for Friday's game. Um, they will feel quite relaxed, I would imagine. Mm. They don't need to um, go at quite, you know, straight, like fire straight out of the, the blocks like, that, like they would have perhaps needed to if they hadn't have won on Tuesday. But yeah, you're right in, in saying that, you know, for a Thai club with FC Seoul having had a poor regular season. Melbourne victory the same. It would have been ideal, really, for them to try and clinch that second spot, which makes these next two games for a Chiang Rai really, really important. If they can get a good result against Seoul and then against Melbourne victory on Monday, then you know, you never know. But it's funny, though, because I think because there are games coming every other day, it will probably help, I think, to try and put Tuesday's bad result behind them, you know, it, it, it's, it makes it worse if you have to wait a long time. On that point, any thoughts ahead of the second game, any dynamics you see shifting or do you think it'll be pretty much the same as this one? I think there might be some personnel changes um, because the win isn't really needed for FC Seoul. Ideally, they, they will obviously want to win, but a, a draw will probably be seen as um, a productive result. I think that they might make a few changes. I think I read um, on AFC.com that uh, Ewan Jun had made some some tweaks to the team based on fitness. Because obviously, like I said, there are games coming every other day. It is quite demanding physically for the players. So we, he might change things personnel-wise. I would expect probably the same formation. The 4-1-4-1 worked very well, mm-hmm. I think, with Osmar sort of marshalling the back four and then in transition you have basically those, those two wide players who come forwards. I think we'll see something very, very similar and it's obviously now the, all these games are being played in a neutral venue so there are no home and away games. Well, well you know, so it, it, I don't think there'll be too much, too many tactical tweaks in that regard because it is basically, well, the, the, they're all away games really for everybody. So yeah, yeah I think it'd be quite similar. Yeah. Uh, and a last question, and maybe it's a tough one based on last night's showing, but of course, now in the K-League, there is an ASEAN quota. So if, for example, you were the head of recruitment at FC Seoul, and well, again, last night's not the best example, but if you watched last night, watched Chiang Rai, and the director came to you and said, let's pick one player for our ASEAN quota. Is there anybody on the pitch that stood out to you that, you, that you'd pick for FC Seoul? Uh, I, I can't, I'm not even, even going to try to say his name, but number 10. Okay, yeah. I thought I thought when he came on he looked quite bright and FC Seoul they will lose Han Sung Gyu, I believe. He'll go back to John Book because he's only on, on loan. Ali Bayef's injured at the moment as well. So Seoul needs somebody who's a bit more attack minded in midfield or perhaps out wide. So someone like him could uh, could 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 really help. And I think that kind of a position would be ideal for a team to to explore the ASEAN extra player quota, you know, someone who can sit in midfield and be, any, you know, if, because Seoul often play with a holding midfield player, someone who's got license to go forward, doesn't really have any de- defensive obligations, then that would be good. So, um, I mean, who would you, who would you re- recommend? Yeah, well, Silicon definitely is, is my pick as well, number 10. I mean, the, the game opened up when he came on. He's got a good understanding of space when the other players have. I think Ekinit, I think he's number 37, would have been, if he was on form, I think you'd have seen him as a very, you know, capable player. He's only 21 as well. Uh, Sivakorn is 26. So he's a, in terms of resale value in the future, it's a bit lower than, than Ekinit. On the mm-hmm. uh, and he played very well for the national team on his debut last year against the UAE. So I thought he, he would be the player to step up. But it's sometimes hard, you know, to play on the stage and with people expecting you to play well. Um, 
And between that, I think number six as well, Petiwat, a defensive midfielder, uh, probably the only one on the pitch I could see was willing to get into those rough, him and uh, the young Ray, of course, willing to get into those rough tackles in the middle of the park. So it's between those three. And I think, yeah, Silver Coins as good as any as a pick to move to the K-League. Yeah, well, I, I do hope that uh, some teams next season do look to the Ashton quota because it's just such an, a, a wasted resource. You would hope that at least one one team over this winter break will will um, be watching the Thai league that's obviously still going on. Watch the uh, Asian Champions League and and have their scouts ready. Yeah, uh, we all hold the same in Thailand. It's always great to see our players go abroad and do well elsewhere in Asia. So, Paul, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yep. Thank you. All right, let's now jump to the preview of match day 13 games. There are seven games coming up this weekend. So every team except for Chiang Rai, who's getting thrashed in Qatar for, for the AFC, and <laughs> Mung Tong, they're the only two teams that won't play this weekend. Now, we're going to start with this one. It's a 6 p.m. kickoff on Saturday. Chunburi, yes, we just talked about them. Chunburi hosting Port. This game, I think, is a big one, not only for Port because they want to lock down that third spot, but also for Chunbri because Chunbri, they're back at home again. They're very strong at home, you know, talk about all the energy, all the late wins that they get there. They're coming up against Port. Now, interesting stat for you, Op. Chunbri's not been Port since 2017. So talk about the last matchup that oh. they've been playing. It's always been either a draw or a win for Port. Now, this, this of course, this 2020 season, and we've seen lots of upsets. We've seen lots of crazy results happening. But Chonburi at home, will they be able to beat an on-form, on-fire Port FC side? No. Port FC is too good for them. <laughs> um, Kevin De Bruyne is playing well. Adisak is scoring goals. The team is gelling. I mean, uh, if there's a game, look, I, I don't, I can't see Chumbri winning this. It's just how how are they gonna stop? Chumbri is not. I don't think Chumbri is the 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 most solid team defensive wise, mm-hmm. and then they're playing against a team like, like Port FC. Would, I mean, plus Sasson Popasert, the Chambri head coach, I don't think he's going to sit back at home against Port FC. I don't think that's his style. I think Sasson, when, when it matters, when, 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 the, when the eye is on him, when the spotlight is on, he wants his team to fight. And he is a tie. There's, there's a reason he's a tie, Mourinho. And... It's not because of, but it's not because of the no, the, the football. I think it's 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 that fight that yeah. There's an ego and there's a pride he carries out on to build him onto the pitch. Mm. So I don't think yeah, I think with everything overall, I think it's gonna be a win for Port FC, and definitely a fun game. Lots of goals will be scored. Yeah, you 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 did already make the predictions. I mean, I was gonna save that for later, but I guess we can jump straight to the predictions. Um, I'm I'm agreeing with you on this one. I think it's going to be a port away win. They're just too strong. They're just too, right now, gelling and playing well. And they're so cohesive together. And I, I enjoy watching the the port, you know, version of, of play during the past few months. It's It's been very pleasing to see a side attack together and, and be able to uh, play such fun football and uh yeah i'm that's why i'm gonna go with uh two one port win i think it's gonna be it's not gonna be that close but the final score is gonna be closer than maybe the, the game is played so i think port's gonna jump off to an early lead chunbri you might you know get a goal back but i think port will take care of things in the end so i'm gonna go two one port what's your score for this one mm. Three two two point FC. All right, there's gonna be goals in this game. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, there, there's gonna be goals for sure 
in this one. We're going to now move on to Sunday's action. This one's Sunday at 6 p.m. It is at the True Stadium. True Bangkok United back at home after getting Totowan Sivan's first win. They're going to host Police Taro, who, man, okay, if you talk about Bangkok and, and their struggles this, this season, you know, we've had that, you know, post-COVID area where they've lost four in a row. <laughs> They, they went away and, and drew against Korat. They came back home, lost against uh, Port. And, and they finally now get that win against that. But that struggle isn't as bad as Police Tero because Police Tero, I just went back and, and saw stats and, and looked at their games that they played. Believe it or not, uh, Police Tero have not won a game in 90 minutes. Yes, in 90 minutes, they've not won a game since the restart. They've not won a game. That game that they beat <laughs> due to the light failure, they've not won a game uh-huh. at all. It's only been draws and loss. And, okay, I, I get it. We were hyping them up, you know, how this 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 team is doing amazing. They signed Sumare. They're going to score goals here and there. You have Kano Pon holding down the midfield. All the potential of the youth playing with the, you know, more experienced veteran players. But they've not performed well. They've, they've lost a bunch of games. Okay. You know, that 5-0 away defeat not long ago at Supanburi, that that basically killed all hopes of them going to, to AFC. And how do you see this one playing out? I mean, I think Chu Bangkok's going to be favored for sure, right? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> I watched them uh, the last time I, I watched the... BU and, and Tarot played was last year. I think it, it was in the Chang Epic Cup game, if mm. I remember correctly. And Tarot, they look excellent that game. BU really had to, to work hard. But that's last year. And now Bangkok is under a new head coach. And situation is different. I don't think Tarot is in... Uh, they're not in a confidence. I don't think the mood within the squad is good. Mm-hmm. I think they've lost a bit of spark. They've lost that's, that, that something special within them. That said, there will be a still, I think Rang San is good enough to get his side organized. But I think BU is just too much for them. I think it's going to be a, a, a close game, but BU will squeeze in a win. I, yeah. I, I, I could see it. Same. I I agree with you again. I think True Bangkok gonna win this one. I don't think it's gonna even gonna be close. I think Toto won under uh, pressure to be able to perform and bring his team back up to a better spot um, on the table. I think that he's he has to deliver. And I think a home game against Police Taro, it's gonna be three points for sure. I'm gonna go three one to True Bangkok in this one. I think that. Natu Wood, who's, who's getting goals of late. He's playing well. Sanrawat seems like a, a player back and four for them. And Totowan, he, he has that football IQ. Like I said, he's one of the, the brightest. He's one of the, the, the smartest coaches in, in Thai League. So I think he's going to deliver in this one. What, what's your score prediction for, for the game? Oh, mm. I think it's going to be... I'll go with 3-1 as well. Okay. <laughs> Back home, we can see it under total one. I think he'll need he he'll need time to 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 find the right balance with his you know, tactically balanced. But mm-hmm. and I think Tero, they're more well drilled. They've had more time playing under their head coach Rang San So I think they'll be dangerous on the break. They'll get goals, but yeah. the attacking talents of Bangkok United is you know far more superior. If and one interesting fact is, if you look at the last eight meetings between Bangkok and Police Tero in the league, excluding excluding a home win from Tero in two thousand and seventeen, Bangkok has won in seven out out of their last meetings. Yeah. So it's I think it's no you you can't say anything else except. It's, a, it's going to be a win for Bangkok, and I'm going to go with 3-1, a 3-1 win for Toto 1. 
For sure, for sure, right there. And I'm glad that you brought that stat up because moving on to the next game now, now this one you you did you did say you did say um like like I mentioned that there's been lots of streaks going on between matchups. The next game we're gonna preview this one 30 minutes after the 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 previous one. So 6:30 Sunday evening, Boy Ram against Samut Prakan City. You talk about dominance. Buiram have won 10 straight games against Samut Bragan slash Patia, and they're back at home again. And I just, you know, I was looking up games to, to preview, and I was like, we, we got to touch on this one. I mean, it seems like Buiram are back, I guess. I mean, Gama got that big win away at Sukhothai. Mm-hmm. While for Samut Bragan, it's it's an up and down team. They they play well one week, they look like a unit, then they, you know, they drop points at home, and they go away and they lose, and then they come back and win again, and then they go away and they lose. So they just lost at Rachaburi last weekend. But man, this team, this team, they've struggled against Buiram historically, and I don't see that changing. Op, do you see Buiram taking care of Samut Prakan at home as well? <laughs> yes, it's going to be three wins from three from Gama. Look, the last week, three new win against Sukhothai. I think the scoreline is a bit misleading because uh-huh. I think Sukhothai played well. Yeah. They look dangerous. And with maybe if Ibsen Melo was in the side, things would be different mm-hmm. for, for, for the home team last week. And I know Buriram beat... Uh, Rayong before the break. So, and Rayong is, oh, during the international break. So, it's not, how do we say, it's not the most exciting results and not the one, not the result we should be overhyping. But look, there's, Samut Pakan is not the most consistent side. They're not that convincing away from home if you take away the, the game against Mung Thong. Mm-hmm. So, I could see a, a, a Buriram win. A Buri- and look, I was really happy when, they, when Buriram announced they've extended the contract of Ke- Kev, um, Kevin Ingresso. Yeah. And I thought, I thought Ingresso is... I think he's been playing quite well since Gamma arrived. And yeah. Yeah, he Buriram got that win. goal last weekend against Sukhothai as well. His left foot mm-hmm. shot into the bottom corner. Now, super off- shy, super shy, super yes. shy, two goals. My boy, my boy, super shy. I knew shy you had to bring it up. I knew you had to bring yep. it up. <laughs> For those who don't know, I'm, I'm a big fan of super shy. I did. I know he doesn't score that much goal, <laughs> but he's, but in the last two games, two goals in two games, a header from a corner. And, he, and he, if he gets another header from a corner, then I'll take it. You know, I had to shake. Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Buiram win. Um, I'm pretty confident with my picks this week. You know, I, I picked the um, I picked the perfect week last week. I mean, it was me against Paul. I think I got all three right, and he only got one right. So this week, I, I see you copying all my picks. You know, we're, we're either <laughs> going to have them all right or all wrong or some right and some wrong. So I'm going 2-0 uh, Buiram. What are you going with? Oh, 2-1 to Buriram. Right. I think there's a goal in some way again. All right. So, yeah, we, we picked all the, all the same sides winning. It, it's up to the exact scoreline now, depending on uh, who gets it right <laughs> and who gets it wrong. So hopefully I come up on top in that one. But anyways, thank you so much all for joining me today for this podcast. It's been great talking to you. We've Recapped all the games from Match Day 12 as well as previewed the ones coming up this weekend on Match Day 13. Till next time, peace.